Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to The Learning Gardener. My name is Pip, welcome to my new garage. It is a disaster zone. So we are in here because I am showing you why I am filming on my iPhone instead of on my normal camera. My mum just gave me my normal camera back, she's been overseas, but my tripod is somewhere in here. Um, hi bird, where it is, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't have time to look for it. Today we are doing day two of a massive garden cleanup. So things have gotten out of control, obviously, um, because we've moved in, right? And obviously I work and I live by myself apart from Dennis and Denise the Menace. And we have been unpacking and dealing with tradies and organizing pantries which i will do a pantry tour at some point when i find the tripod um and so i really have not had time to edit videos to do anything so i'm sorry i have been such a hopeless youtuber lately it really has been a diabolical six months and i have been so exhausted but the other day i got sick which meant i slept all day so i'm feeling a little better so we have received delivery of some pine bark mulch this morning to help me finish off this garden task. One of the reasons we're working on this task today is yes, because things are getting a bit out of control and it's getting harder to um, mow and whip a snipper because I didn't, I've never done this before. I didn't know how to set this up perfectly. I was trying to minimize costs with um, mulch and stuff like that. and. I was limited with time. So that Dahlia area, I had wanted to um, get that all set up to minimize the having to crawl around to pull out the weeds later. But painting became a priority. The internal work became a priority because the build is finished and we were trying to get into the house as soon as possible. And obviously there are a lot of things that are not as I would like them, like the mess like the fact that we don't have um, curtains or functioning curtains and blinds are missing on a lot of the main living areas and the neighbor can see into the house and it has commented as such and you know there's a lot of things that are happening and there is just me to deal with them so I'm hoping that over the next couple of days I can deal with them the reason we started this weekend instead of dealing with the internal mess is because yesterday was a really cool day. So it was nice to be able to get into the garden and um, the next couple of days are cooler and then we are forecast to get four days of rain. And so what I'm hoping that rain will do is soften the cardboard and smother the grass um, without me having to water it in. That is what I'm hoping for. But for right now, we are inside because Ikea is about to arrive with some bookshelves that that will sit either side of the fireplace but first the skirting has to get done so there's a lot of things happening so I know that this video is chaos but my life is chaos so enjoy the ride my absolute biggest motivator to get this done this weekend though or as much as I humanly can is that it is getting hotter and hotter and I basically want to spend very little time out in the garden in summer other than just general maintenance here and there and harvesting. I don't want to be doing these big projects in summer. It has been a hot spring. The other concern about the weather heating up is it's becoming um, snake season and I don't want to be dealing with long grass all the time and having to whip a snipper all the time because it takes forever. But more I'm concerned about the snakes and I don't want the puppies to go lizard hunting and find a snake. In some places the wood chips have worked better than others but this is where you can see the cardboard still present from when I initially laid these um, garden beds and these ones were one of the first ones and they were maybe four or five months ago at least and the cardboard's still there but if I brought the whippersnipper through it would break down pretty easily but it has sort of compressed against the grass level and it is dropping down which is great to see uh, so I'm going to come in and whippersnipper some of this. The idea with tidying this all up is to make it easier to manage. So on the ones with um, weed matting underneath because I ran out of cardboard, whenever you whip a snipper around the edges it gets tangled in the weed matting and I'm not convinced that the paint on the beds is not going to get damaged by the whipper snippering because it seems to scratch very easily. 
Um, so the idea would be to tidy up these garden edges so that I can easily run a mower through here, uh, in which case I'm probably going to change this to a different mulch on the edges and then have the um, pine bark in between or I'm going to pine bark it all. With my first order of mulch, and you can see it's been a while since I've whipped a snippet, although I just sort of did a quick job, um, I had mulched in between all of here, but then I realized I wasn't going to have enough mulch to do the other side, and then it seemed like a really wasteful exercise, but I think now that I have heaps of cardboard, because I have just moved, I'll be able to spread the mulch a little bit um, thinner and therefore be more effective with it, and to be honest, the grass just keeps popping through and it's really irritating to mow and whip a snip through here all the time. It's just too time consuming. So I think, to be honest, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. And I'll probably leave that middle track that runs all the way down to the back as grass. The puppies do not seem hindered by the mulch at all. So piece by piece what I'm doing is pulling up this mulch, putting the um, cardboard underneath and I just I can't be bothered to pull off the um, sticky tape. I find that over time it comes free and you can just pull it out no problem at all. Um, but then I am relaying the mulch down and then I've already whippersnippered the edges but they need to be a bit tighter and I need to determine where the end point is going to be and so once I've retightened that up I will spread all the mulch around the outside. Hey Raffi. As I'm cleaning and snipping around the garden beds this is a really perfect example of why I'm not just going to rim around the um, beds with the mulch because that's what I did here because there's um, weed mat underneath and you can see the grass is just completely taken over and it's just not worked as an option. It really needs to be total smothering. I had also thought about using the other mulch to line around the edges of the bed rather than fill in this entire section but you can see with whippersnippering it just tosses that mulch everywhere and it gets covered in grass. This area has now been tidied up. It looks so nice like this. It's almost a shame to cover it up. But the amount of work that goes into keeping this edged is unreal. Because as you can see, you flick um, bits of pine mulch everywhere when you whip a snipper. And so it's not really something that's feasibly mowable because that would damage your mower so oh, let's see how we go i'm i might try just a cardboard strip along the edge because i guess i can always add more cardboard and more mulch down the track um, but it's time to fill in these edges tidy everything up and then add the cardboard down the side of the dahlias 
and the sunflowers and then I've got to move on to de-weeding this side and the rest of that side and then I've got fruit trees to plant and six million other things to do so let's get the cardboard laid and get on with it you sun baking bird look a bit hot my beautiful girl I think despite the large amount of cardboard that has accumulated on the desk I am on the deck I think by the time I actually fill up just in between the garden beds I'm not gonna have enough to run lengthways so I'm gonna have to dig out my uh, knife and cut off some strips to finish off the ends but I think for sure I'm gonna run out of cardboard by the time I get to the ends of these aisles so I'm gonna save it and use it on the more important areas first and maybe this is just a garden design floor that's a good stick buddy so as I'm going around the garden and working, I'm finding areas that need a little bit of maintenance like calendulas that might need pruning, roses that might need some support, same with the dahlias and most definitely the same with the tomatoes. So what I am using is a whole box of tomato clips that I bought on Amazon. And these are the like world's greatest invention. They clip and loop and you can easily unloop them it's not annoying like um, the soft tie wire which I've used before which is painful to get apart this is maybe perhaps more of a, a right hand job rather than a left um, but it's really easy to um, sustain and support your plants without actually having to wrestle them into shape or strangle them but guys look ah oh, rude oh my god Come here, Urgh. Urgh. caterpillar. Rude. Prior to that caterpillar surprise, I was going to show you my beautiful tomatoes, which he has pooped on, which is so offensive, and have some beautiful dark ones that are called tomato blueberries, which seems like a very good name for them. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I really hesitate with netting because then it becomes one giant mess but last night I saw that my nemesis from my Sydney garden ah had returned um, oh squash bug no um, and that nemesis is a cockatoo so uh, if the cockatoos really decide to camp out here we're going to have problems because I'll show you what they do. This is a cockatoo testing the waters. They don't eat the sunflower seeds. They don't eat the sunflower. They just enjoy destroying things. And generally what they will do is they will bite things off at the, the bottom of the stem. So it kills your plants and they'll shred up your grass and eat all your fruit except again they don't eat it they just bite into it a couple of times and then move on with their lives cockatoos are the worst and then when they've decided they're going to camp out at your house they will then start eating your house and i am not kidding they literally will eat your house cockatoos being here is a very big problem so shockies will be spending a bit more time outside. I'm so disappointed about my poor little tomatoes. I just, oh, I don't want to spray them. The whole point is that, that they're, everything's organic that, well, apart from the fertilizer that I put in, but I just, oh, I really don't want to spray. Just caterpillars, find somewhere else to live, okay? How's that? Oh, I have to show you guys something because we haven't been in the garden together for ages. <laughs> Check this bed out. This is the Mary Washington um, asparagus, which I've never grown or eaten before. But these are marigolds. They are on steroids. I have only ever had tiny little 
stunted marigolds before they have never had any height on them so I was not expecting them to dwarf the potatoes I mean not potatoes tomatoes and you can see these tomatoes have just taken off like rockets I really need to get in here and harvest the carrots but I have been very unmotivated to do so because I just found out I'm sensitive slash allergic to carrots which is extremely annoying because I really like carrots um, but that's a story for another day but so we've got this beastie tomato um, which is they're all three of them in here are romas and they have just gotten massive and there are some pepper plants buried in here which I'm honestly surprised look like they're doing so well given how much shade they appear to be in um, I probably it's time to take these off because once again very sad bean time even though they say they can grow through what is spring although it's very hot to the point where a lot of the carrots seem to be heading towards going to um see let's pull this one out and have a look oh it's so beautiful but it'll be nice and woody because it has created a um ooh, it's a funny root on the carrot hmm problem for another day so um, that will go in the compost bin you can see we have another one that's about to, to put on some flowers here let's pull that bad boy out and see what we got I've got a white one because I've planted different colors there's another one that's about to go to seed it's very small for deciding to bolt and what is this one I think these ones were um, these two corners oh maybe not this one but the orange one was from um the previous garden seeds so that looks a little bit better a little bit cleaner let's have a look at how big these onions are if they're putting on any sort of no not yet any sort of size oh well we better get back to it and back to things like clipping these tomatoes back up so they're a little bit more supported this is why the garden is a survival of the fittest garden because my two crazy puppies, although they've stopped doing it right now, but he's retreated inside for some shade, tear around in between the garden beds chasing each other. But let's get back to clipping tomatoes and providing them support. I really need to come in and like tidy this up, but there's only so many things you can do with a weekend. You know, you've got to pick and choose. And <laughs> I think to be honest, with all the pressure of moving, unless I see a uh, spider web, um, any grossly problematic branches like on this one I probably won't do anything about it because quite simply I just don't have time and it's not a priority Look, let's just see what happens if we let it grow get some of these gross leaves out there and I think this is just because it's so overcrowded but Oh, maybe one of these days I'll have some time. That'd be nice. But this is what happens when you move into a new house. Life turns into chaos, but it is really beautiful. And I'm so proud of my cabbages. Never had success with cabbage before. But I can't eat them. So I am sensitive to cabbage as well. So good times. Something else that is a priority this weekend is this compost area. And well, the wood room, not so much. Yesterday, there was a hawk that flew over the garden, and for some reason, Ladybird decided that it was the most fascinating thing that she'd ever seen. And she is a hunting breed, so she wanted to hunt it. So she climbed up the wood, and thankfully, we placed it far enough away from the fence that she really can't, unless she really wants to try and belly flop onto the fence, she can't get over the fence from there. Part of the reason why I've placed the compost bins here is because there is a hibiscus next door that will at least make it harder for her to get over but she was starting to prop herself up on the compost bin so I need to put the, the um, wire fencing around here so she doesn't get any ideas and hop the fence because she doesn't like the dog next door either. As I'm cleaning out where I've planted the dahlias I'm noticing that the um, bamboo name sticks that I put there not that long ago are already totally faded and you can't actually read what 
most of them are which is very unfortunate and I'm noticing the massive difference in the amount of weed and grass pressure on these dahlias where I hadn't um, put any um, of the pine bark mulch versus the ones behind the camera where I have it's a massive well I guess once behind the camera are sunflowers but whatever um, <laughs> there's a massive difference in the amount of pressure and so I'm going to try and do what I can to uh, pre create some cardboard um, ideally I'm going to either use really thin cardboard or newspaper if I can get some um, and weave that in between the plants but I have got a dripper hose here um, which I'm having varying levels of success with so I'll keep going because I need to come in here and whippersnipper this all um, but at the moment you can't really tell where the border of the grass is versus the dahlia. Something really unfortunate about this garden is that everywhere there is glass and um, one of the reasons why I'm pretty keen on mulching and redoing this whole garden is to try and find as much of it as I can. The other day I found a, a shard of a bottle um, neck and I just don't know how the puppies haven't cut themselves yet but thankfully they haven't. So here's a perfect example. I didn't know this was here except that I killed these weeds off. Don't understand how you would leave so much glass in your backyard. Okay so that's all I've done for today. I have cleared out some more beds but I have tidied up quite a lot through here. But I'm running out of daylight hours and the puppies have got to get fed. So it'll have to continue tomorrow. Dun, dun, dun. My nemesis has found my garden.